أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم تسبح له السماوات السبع والأرض ومن فيهن وإن من شيء إلا يسبح بحمده ولكن لا تفقهون تسبيحهم إنه كان حليما غفورا رب السماوات والأرض وما بينهما ورب المشارق إنا زينا السماء الدنيا بزينة الكواكب وحفظا من كل شيطان مارد لا يسمعون إلى الملأ الأعلى ويقذفون من كل جانب دحورا ولهم عذاب واصب إلا من خطف الخطفة فأتبعه شهاب ثاقب May Allah's peace and blessings be on you. You have just heard the ayahs from the Noble Koran. Let us read the translation. Surah 17, Al-Isra, Ayah 44. The seven skies and the earth and all beings therein declare his glory. There is not a thing but celebrates his praise. And yet you understand not how they declare his glory. Verily, he is oft forbearing, most forgiving. Surah 37, Ayah 5. Lord of the skies and of the earth and all between them, and Lord of every point at the rising of the sun. Ayah 6. We have indeed decked the lower sky with beauty in the stars. Ayah 7. For beauty and for guard against all obstinate, rebellious, evil spirits. Ayah 8 so they should not strain their ears in the direction of the exalted assembly, but be cast away from every side. Ayah 9, repulsed, for they are under perpetual penalty. Ayah 10, except such as snatch away something by stealth, and they are pursued by flaming fire, piercing brightness. There are seven skies, one above the other. There are beings, not only on the earth, but also in these skies. All the contents of these skies and this earth praise the Lord. But people do not understand how the earth and the skies declare his glory. It is also clear that there must be a lowest sky and a highest sky. Further evidence of this is found in these words from the Koran, Surah 37, Ayah 6. We have indeed decked the lower sky with beauty. Surah 20, Ayah 4. It is a revelation from the one who created the earth and the highest skies. The Noble Koran is the word of Allah revealed to the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, approximately 1400 years ago in Arabia. God is known as Allah in Islam. He is the one and only one. He has no partners, no son, no family. He is the most merciful, the most compassionate, the owner of the day of judgment. No vision can grasp him. He is the creator and sustainer of all the worlds, whether those worlds are known or unknown to mankind. The noble Koran is Allah's guidance to all mankind. This revelation orders a way of life for humanity to gain the grace of Allah, the Almighty. The Koran also describes the rewards and punishments for obedience and disobedience to Allah's commands. The Koran was revealed to Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, in Arabic. However, translations in all languages are available. The preservation of the noble Koran is a miracle of Islam. The purpose of the Quran is to provide guidance to mankind. But in this noble book, the Creator also has subtly revealed aspects or properties of his creations. The study of his physical worlds, 
his creatures, and the laws which govern them, are generally known as sciences. For example, space sciences, the topic of this video, explain the character of the sun, moon, planets, and stars. Medical sciences provide knowledge about the human body and its functions. Let me emphasize again that the Noble Quran is not a book of science. It is a book of guidance to all mankind, provided by Allah, the Most Merciful. Through the Quran, Allah orders scientists, engineers, doctors, economists, and other people of understanding to probe and analyze his creations and their governing laws. This rational exploration of the worlds leads to further admiration of his unlimited power and strengthens our belief in him. Let us read the ayah from the Quran, Surah 3, Ayah 190. In the creation of the skies and the earth and the alteration between night and daylight, there are signs for prudent persons. The correct name for the Quranic statement is ayah and not verse. The Quran is not a poem. When the noble Quran was revealed, human knowledge of astronomy was limited. Hence, many of the Quranic ayahs about the stars, planets, and the skies were not properly interpreted. As human knowledge has advanced through centuries of research, the meanings of the Quranic ayahs about space have expanded and are more clear today than they have ever been. It is exciting to discover that the modern theories and test results are in harmony with Quranic descriptions. All scientific theories are man-made. Thus, these theories are imperfect and may evolve over time. In case of any conflict between the Quranic ayahs and scientific theories or results, the Noble Quran prevails. The meanings of the Quranic ayahs are ever-expanding as human knowledge continues to increase through the ages. The Muslim civilization made a great contribution to the development of science and technology during the time when the European civilization had sunk into darkness. Algebra was developed by the Arab Muslims. The concept of zero, though invented by an Indian mathematician, was implemented by the Caliph Harun al-Rashid of Baghdad. Khalifa ibn Abil Mahasan, who lived in 1256 AD, was the greatest eye doctor of that time. The most famous name in medicine was Abu Marwan of Seville, Spain during the 11th century and was known as Avan Zohar in Europe. A Greek physicist, Abul Fatal Kuzimi, proposed the theory of gravitation as a universal force in 1122 AD. Abu Muhammad ibn Baitar of Malaga, Spain, published his book on botany in 1190 AD, which remained the authoritative treatise on the subject until the 16th century. The Islamic civilization developed such scientific terms as algebra, Arabic numerals, cipher, azimuth, alembic, zenith, and the almanac. Muslims also excelled in astronomy. They built sophisticated astronomical observatories for the study of stars and planets. The names of Nasir Tusi and Ulug Beg are well known in Muslim astronomy. The famous Heralda Tower of Seville, Spain, was the minaret of the Grand Mosque and also an observatory where the astronomer Jabir worked and wrote his book, Correction of Almagest, in 1240 A.D. In 1081 A.D., Ibrahim al-Sadi of Valencia, Spain, constructed the oldest known celestial globe, a brass sphere 81 and a half inches in diameter. Its surface was carved with 47 constellations and 1,015 stars of different magnitudes. Ptolemy of Europe had explained the motions of stars with his theory of epicycles and eccentrics. However, Abu Ishaq of Cordoba University disproved Ptolemaic theory. This paved the way for Copernicus, who hypothesized that the sun was stationary and the earth in motion. The Islamic State was also the world leader in hospitals. Damascus hospitals provided free treatment and medications for three centuries, starting in 1160 A.D. American historian Will Durant wrote in his book, The Age of Faith, 
that the Islamic civilization of Spain was an honor to mankind. After the decline of Muslim power, the scientific and technological knowledge accrued by the Islamic State was adopted by Christian Europe. The European civilization then developed modern scientific theories based on knowledge they acquired from the Islamic civilization. Copernicus, Galileo, Newton, and Einstein are the giants of modern astronomy and the space sciences. In the 20th century, the accomplishments in space are at the highest level in human history. The United States of America must be praised for its role in this achievement. Manned landing of the moon, the Viking spacecrafts landing on Mars, the Voyager's journey beyond the solar system, Magellan's successful mission to Venus and mapping of that planet, the space shuttle, the plans to build space stations. All these have added new pages to the history of man's accomplishments. Space exploration is one of the noblest works yet, demonstrating that the creation of Allah is being better understood with the passage of time. The Noble Quran, Ayah 1. In the name of Allah, most gracious, most merciful. Ayah 2. Praise be to Allah, the cherisher and sustainer of the worlds. As this last ayah notes, Allah has created numerous worlds, not just one. Our earth is one of the many worlds that Allah has created. Modern sciences have revealed that our earth is one of nine planets which swim around a medium star, the sun. Some planets have moons orbiting around them. The entity is known as a solar system. Our solar system is an extremely small part of a group of stars known as the Milky Way galaxy. This galaxy has an estimated 400 billion stars, large and small. It would take 100,000 years to travel from one extreme of the galaxy to the other at the speed of light, 186,000 miles per second. The astronomers estimate that there are millions of galaxies, some larger than the Milky Way. All of the galaxies and all that is between them constitute the universe known to man. Allah is the Lord, the creator, the cherisher and sustainer of the entire universe and its contents, both known and unknown to mankind. There are creations we do not see. There may be skies we do not see. As stated in the Quran, there are seven skies, the lowest one having been decorated with stars. Now, let us look at our Earth and ourselves in comparison with the immense and huge space and its galaxies and stars. We are quite insignificant. We are not the only creations Allah takes care of. The Noble Quran, Surah 40, Ayah 57. Assuredly, the creation of the skies and the earth is a greater matter than the creation of men. Yet most men understand not. He takes care of billions of worlds at the same time. Surah 41, Ayah 11. Then he soared up to sky while it was still haze, and told both it and the earth, Come, either obediently or reluctantly. They both said, We shall come willingly. The word haze is the key word here. This alludes to the presence of gas and dust clouds in space before the galaxy formation started. Muslims believe that Allah ordered the formation of the universe. The universe submitted to his laws in strict obedience. The statement that the earth and the skies came together in willing obedience may be telling us the same laws govern throughout the universe, including the earth. The Quran offers truth about the process of creation of the universe by Allah, who conceived this grand design. The Noble Quran, Surah 32, Ayah 4. It is Allah who has created the skies and the earth and all between them in six days and firmly established on the throne of authority. You have none besides him to protect or intercede for you. 
Will you not then receive admonition? Here the Quran describes the creation of the universe within the context of time. The words six days are the key. A day in the Earth's time frame is the period in which the Earth completes one revolution around its axis. The Quran here refers to conditions before the Earth and Sun were created. Hence, the six days are not days as we measure them. They represent long periods of time, perhaps millions of years. The number six may also represent stages in the process of creation. The modern scientific theories conclude that space contained gases and clouds before the formation of galaxies. The most widely accepted theory, called the Big Bang Theory, formulated during the 1900s, describes that the cosmic expansion was initiated 20 billion years ago. About a million years after the Big Bang explosion, the universe looked almost opaque, as if it were a huge cloud of fog. The word haze in the Noble Quran may be referring to this state. As the temperatures dropped, hydrogen gas was formed. A sudden lowering of the pressure resulted in the compression of gases, which induced gravitational collapse and ultimately formed galaxies. The stars were formed due to fragmentation of gaseous clouds. Our sun is an average hydrogen burning star. The modern view of the formation of the solar system is that a slowly rotating gas cloud or nebula existed for tens of millions of years. The cloud finally collapsed and developed a dense, slowly rotating, opaque core which was destined to become the sun. It was surrounded by a rotating disk of gas which contained dust particles and gas atoms. The disk's own gravity helped to form asteroids which accumulated more matter and became planets and moons. The comets and meteors also resulted from the particles. All these theories and observations point to a central theme, the presence of a gaseous, hazy environment before the creation of the celestial bodies started. The operation and maintenance of the system is under his law and command. It's very interesting to find in the Quran that Earth was an integral part of the other bodies in the universe at one time. Surah 21, Ayah 30. Have not those who disbelieve seen how skies and earth were once one solid mass which we ripped apart? We have made every living thing out of water. Will they still not believe? It may be noted that in revealing the Quran 1400 years ago, Allah, the Almighty, alluded to the expanding universe. Here is that ayah from the Quran, Surah 51, Ayah 47. The sky we have built firmly, and we are extending it. It was during the 1900s that a famous scientist, Edwin Hubble, discovered through observations and experimentation that all galaxies are receding from one another. Based on Hubble's discoveries, the age of the universe has been estimated to be 17.9 billion years after the Big Bang explosion. The force of the Big Bang is still active and pushing the galaxies away from one another. Is there life in the universe? This question has been asked by all space scientists. There's no definitive answer to this question. However, more than 1,400 years ago, in the process of guidance to mankind, Allah, creator and sustainer of the universe and everything in it, hinted at the existence of biological life scattered all over the universe, as in this ayah, Surah 42, Ayah 29. And among his signs is the creation of the skies and the earth and the living creatures that he has scattered through them. And he has power to gather them together when he wills. From the above statement, it's obvious that biological life in some form or other is scattered through some of the billions of stars in space. Allah, who created the countless beings, surely has the power to bring them together. 
This may mean that someday extraterrestrials may visit us, or we will visit them. Here's another enlightening ayah from the Quran, Surah 65, Ayah 12. Allah is the one who created seven skies and the same number of planets which are like the earth. The command prevails among them, so you all may know that Allah is capable of everything. Allah comprises everything in knowledge. Now, the word seven in this ayah means numerous. A Muslim believes in every word of the noble Quran without proof. Hence, at this time and age, according to our understanding of the noble Quran, several earths similar to our earth do exist in the universe. Does life exist on these planets? It is logical to assume that the planets having environments similar to those of earth support forms of life similar to those we know. A famous scientist, Frank Drake, has developed a probability equation which states that the number of civilizations in our galaxy is equal to the average lifetime of a civilization as measured in years. It may be noted that significant research is going on in the United States and other parts of the world to locate possible life in other parts of the universe. The rumors about flying saucers and movies like E.T. and Close Encounters of the Third Kind are examples of man's dreams about extraterrestrials. Two frames of time are mentioned in the Quran. One is the time frame of this world in which we live, and the other is his time frame. What we would call a thousand years may be nothing more than a day or a minute to him. Time to him is nothing. Allah is present everywhere in the universe at the same time. He is beyond limitations of time. Allah reveals the relationship of his time scale to that of time on earth as follows. Surah 22, Ayah 47. Yet they ask you to hasten on the punishment but Allah will not fail in his promise. Verily, a day in the sight of your Lord is like a thousand years of your reckoning. Surah 32, Ayah 5. He organizes the matter from sky down to earth. Then it will soar back up to him on a day whose measure is a thousand years according to the way you count. Now let's further examine modern space science. The theory of special relativity, formulated in 1900, explains the time dilation phenomenon which characterizes high-speed motion. The equation is big T equals small t over the square root of 1 minus v squared over c squared, where small t is the time between ticks when a clock is not moving. V is the velocity of the clock when it is moving, C is the velocity of light, 186,000 miles per second, and big T is the time between ticks of the moving clock. As the velocity of the clock reaches the velocity of light, the time T will approach infinity, and the clock will stop until ultimately time as we know it will cease. If an astronaut travels at such a speed that his clock runs at one thousandth of the rate on the Earth's surface, then he will receive a daily news bulletin from the Earth every 90 seconds, and he will witness a U.S. presidential election five times a week. Within a few weeks, he will receive the news that all of his friends and relatives are dead. Here on Earth, the astronauts' daily reports will come in once in three years, and a 10-minute greeting will take a week to record. Yet back in his spaceship, the astronaut is not aware of any peculiarity about time within his own surroundings. On both Earth and the spaceship, time seems to pass normally, physically, biologically, and psychologically. When he returns to Earth after 10 years of travel, he finds 10,000 years have passed on the Earth, and he is only 10 years older than what he was when he left the Earth. The movie Planet of the Apes is a good illustration of the time dilation phenomenon.
The noble Quran has numerous ayahs which refer to the sun, moon, earth, stars, planets, asteroids, and meteorites as visible examples of Allah's creations. The Quran also refers to the laws that these celestial bodies follow. Surah 36, Ayah 40. The sun dare not overtake the moon, nor does night outplace the day. Each floats in its own orbit. It is clear that the sun and the moon move independently of one another. The Earth's rotation on its axis has been alluded to because day and night cannot occur at the same time on Earth at the same locations. The orbits of the celestial bodies are very well known to man in the 20th century. However, 1400 years ago, man's knowledge about the motions of the sun, moon, and planets was very limited. It was the noble Quran which pointed out that the sun is moving on a prescribed path. This motion was discovered by the scientists in the 20th century. Surah 36, Ayah 38. And the sun runs his course for a period determined for him. That is the decree of him, the exalted in might, the all-knowing. This ayah refers to time limit for the existence of the sun. According to modern cosmology, each star has a finite lifetime. Our sun is five billion years old and is expected to live for another five billion years. Modern space scientists have determined that the sun is moving at the rate of 12 miles per second in a rounded path. With it, the solar system is moving toward the constellation Cygnus, where it will eventually die. William Herschel discovered this in 1781 AD. The Noble Quran, Surah 55, Ayah 33. O oh, you assembly of jinns and men, if it be, you can pass beyond the zones of the skies and the earth, pass you, not without authority will you be able to pass. In this ayah, Allah instructs mankind and his other creation, jinns, to penetrate into the regions of the planets, stars, the universe, and the earth. In Islam, space exploration is encouraged. The above indicates that it is possible. However, nothing is possible without Allah's will. The 40-year space exploration effort of the United States has added new pages to the history of mankind. The ongoing space station project is a testimony to America's determination to explore the planets, the stars, and the universe. The main purpose here shall be to increase our knowledge of Allah's creations and to fear Allah. Surah 35, Ayah 28. And so among men and crawling creatures and cattle are they of various colors. Those truly fear Allah among his servants who have knowledge. However, research into the creations of Allah is not encouraged if men start to rebel against Allah after they gain more knowledge. The Noble Quran is the speech of God, who is one and only one. And in the Quran, he is known as Allah. It has been stated that the Quran was descended from the upper heavens to the lower heavens. The angel Gabriel was then commanded to take the Quran part by part to Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and inscribe it into his memory. The Prophet, in turn, recited the Quran to his companions in exactly the same words that were revealed to him. The Quran provides guidance to all mankind and is not a book of science. However, Allah mentions about his creations frequently. Quranic ayahs describe the relationships and their movements among the celestial objects, the origin and expansion of the universe, and other astronomical phenomena which scientists of the modern age have confirmed through theories and experiments. However, it must be noted that the truth of the Noble Quran is not needed from scientists. Man has begun to discover the great laws of the universe which were already revealed briefly by Allah over 1400 years ago. 
this study reinforces our belief in the Creator and may guide us to lead lives according to His laws, to gain His pleasure. We urge the government of the United States to maintain its enthusiastic support of the space programs. The Space Shuttle is the most remarkable machine. With it, we can launch numerous satellites and bring damaged satellites back to Earth for repair. The Voyager passed by the planets Jupiter, Saturn, and Neptune. It has left the solar system. The Magellan spacecraft mapped the surface of the planet Venus with special high-resolution radar and was remarkably successful. Knowledge is power. We must continue our research into Allah's creations through space exploration for the benefit of humanity. Surah 46, Ayah 3. We have only created skies and earth and whatever lies between them for the truth and for a specific period, while those who disbelieve are dodging what they have been warned about. The universe, of which earth is an extremely small fragment, has been created for a specific period of time. All of the heavenly bodies, including the earth, will come to an end. But the time of their expiration is known only to Allah. The termination of the present creation will be the first event on the Day of Judgment. There are numerous ayahs in the Quran which further describe destruction of the celestial bodies on the Day of Judgment. Surah 81, Ayah 1. When the sun has been extinguished. 2. When the stars slip out of place. 3. When the mountains travel along. Surah 82, Ayah 1. When the sky bursts apart. 2. When the planets are strewn around. 3. When the seas spill forth. 4. When graves are overturned. 5. Each soul will know what it sent on ahead and has left behind. Now, let's examine the modern scientific knowledge on this subject. If the present gravitational rules come to an end, the planets and stars will collide and a state of destruction and chaos will occur. The closed universe theory states that the galaxies which are receding at present will begin to contract and at a certain time in the future, due to mutual gravitational pull, collisions of stars and solar systems will begin. These collisions will destroy celestial structures. Life will cease to exist. Even before this, it is predicted that our sun will expand and the rising temperatures will destroy life on Earth. Then the sun will lose its light and will become a dwarf and die. Scientists predict that the entire process of termination will take place in 20 billion years. What will happen after this big squeeze? Scientists do not know. What happens after the galaxies and the Earth are destroyed? What happens after the present forms of life come to an end? These questions are very well answered in the Noble Quran. We do not have to wait for the scientists to find out. They may take thousands of years, or they may never find the answers. Surah 21, Ayah 104. The day that we roll up the skies like a scroll, rolled up for books, completed, even as we produced the first creation, so shall we produce a new one, a promise we have undertaken. Truly shall we fulfill it. Surah 14, Ayah 48. One day the earth will be changed to a different earth, and so will be the skies, and men will be marshaled forth before Allah, the One, the Irresistible. These ayahs clearly state that a new creation has been promised on the Day of Judgment. But it must be noted that the new creation will be different from the world that we know now. 
and our life will be eternal in this new world. The Quran describes the new creation, or the new skies, and the new earth with symbols and metaphors because it is impossible for us to imagine new worlds with our present perspective. While the modern scientist does not have adequate knowledge about the new creation, through study of the Noble Quran, we can enrich our knowledge of the future of the universe and the new world. From the Noble Quran, we also learn the following. Surah 67, Ayah 2. The one who created death and life, so he may test which of you is finest in action. He is the powerful, the forgiving. Ayah 3. Who created seven matching skies. You do not see any discrepancy in the mercy giving's creation. Look once again. Do you see any flaws? O oh Allah, I thank you for giving us such hints about your creations and systems. Let the knowledge of your creations and systems increase my faith in you. Amen.